Okay, the time is one o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it's time for us to start the last of our week of webinars this week, certainly not least, with Excel Tech Solutions. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO here at CWNP, and we've been doing webinars every day this week, getting everything ramped up toward the Wi-Fi Trek conference that's coming up in under two months now. So Excel Techs is one of the sponsors for our conference, and any sponsor of the conference has the opportunity to be on one of these week of webinar webinars. And we'll be doing another week in September additionally. But uh, these were the sponsors that were able to get in early and participate in this, and we're very excited to have Excel Tech Solutions with us today. They're going to be talking about looking for Wi-Fi in crowded places, meeting the challenges of Wi-Fi in stadiums and large public venues. You want to make sure that you follow them on Twitter. You can find them at Excel Techs. And of course, Brian Smith, our presenter today, is also available on Twitter at Elon Smitty. So make sure that you note those there in the opening slide and follow them on Twitter because you'll be able to learn about new information as they release that information. Now, before we get into our main presentation today, I want to remind you about Wi-Fi Trek that's coming up in a couple of months, as I said. And so if we take a look at the next screen, we'll see that Wi-Fi Trek is going to be coming up in under two months now, and it is available to give you more information and so forth at conferences.cwnp.com. That's conferences.cwnp.com. And you can go there in order to register to see the different uh, speakers that are gonna be there. So there's a schedule link to let you see all the speakers. Note that the conference itself actually starts on the 17th and goes through the 19th but we have phenomenal pre-conference training classes. So we've got exceptional CWNEs that'll be teaching everything ranging from CWS and CWT right all the way through to our professional level certifications, CWAP, CWDP, and CWSP. CWAP and CWDP will be the brand new courses that I've been talking about this week in the two webinars that I did in this week of webinars. We did a CWAP first look on Monday and a CWDP first look yesterday. And so those webinars are already archived on YouTube and you can go and take a look at what's new and what's coming in those certifications and when to expect re resources to be available and so forth. So make sure you check that out. And if you haven't signed up for the conference yet, go to conferences.cwmp.com to do so. And with that, I want to go ahead and turn it over to Brian so he can talk to you about Excel Tech Solutions resources and some of the things they've come up with to deal with issues in some of these large scale environments where we need really good Wi-Fi. So, Brian, go ahead and take it over. Thank you, Tom. And uh, thanks to all who, uh, who are on the uh, on the call today. And I appreciate everyone and all the hard work over at CWNP. And we're thankful for being a, a sponsor now for the fourth uh, fourth year. Uh, of the Wi-Fi Trek conference. Um, what better place it to be than San Diego this year? So if you haven't registered, please register now. It's probably one of the top two conferences that we attend uh, on, a, on a yearly basis. So highly recommended. And uh, thanks again for everybody over at CWNP for the, uh, for the opportunity. So what I'm gonna, I, I wanna discuss, obviously with everybody today on, uh, on the call is the uh, is high density, or, or excuse me, a large public venue uh, wireless and some of the things that uh, that we can help you with and, and uh, support you with. Um, what I'd like to do is go a little bit about who we are in case you're not familiar. Uh, we are a manufacturer of uh, Wi-Fi network uh, solutions and, and ancillary items. Um, as you can tell, anything from antennas and enclosures and cable assemblies to uh, solar solutions. Um, and, and, and most importantly on this slide is uh, is the custom solutions. Um, designed by you, and we'll go through a lot of those today during the call, um, and we'll talk about where these fit in most of these applications that you may be running into. Um, and all of our solutions are, are compatible with multiple AP manufacturers, just about all the major AP manufacturers in the industry. So why Excel Techs? Well, um, one of the things are, and one of the most important things about us is that uh, we do a, a lot of customized solutions for customers um, with quick turnarounds. We've, we've, and I'll, I'll go into more details about some of the, the applications and where we've had some constraints with time and what we've been able to do on custom uh, solutions. Uh, we we'll do small quantities on custom orders, uh, get them turned around relatively quickly. Uh, can do a lot of customization of skins, sizing, um, hardware, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we have a, we built a very strong reputation of being fast, 
and responsive to our customers. We have, uh, we've been in this industry for a long time, long enough for, uh, um, uh, too long for me to remember. Um, and then, you know, we have a, our ISO certified and, and third party testing and obviously key relationships, uh, in the wireless industry. And I do want to note one thing. I am, this isn't going to take the full hour. It is going to take about 20 minutes. I want to be cognizant of everybody's, uh, Friday afternoon, but most importantly, I have a tea time in 30 minutes. So I want to get through this as well. So why, why are we focusing on Wi-Fi in stadiums and, and large public venues? Uh, I'm not going to read the, the notes, but there's, there's tons and tons of client devices and everything that are coming into these, these venues. Um, and people want to offload, uh, or the, at least the venue owners want to offload a lot of that onto Wi-Fi as opposed to, you know, the carriers, uh, the carriers network. So we spent a lot of time and resources and, uh, and effort into building solutions and working with partners and customers on developing solutions to help that a lot and make it a lot easier for them. So some of the common issues in, in stadiums and large public venues that you're going to see are obviously, you know, concrete, uh, steel. Um, they're very crowded. They're very populated. Um, large crowds in a small area mean large numbers of APs. Um, and, and part of that challenge that you're going to see are, are the different themes and environments within those different uh, uh, locations. You might be in a large public venue, you might have, you know, um, um, uh, an area where people are buying beer and soda and, and food, and they might have brick facades and they might have wood facades and they're all uh, decorated aesthetically in something unique. Um, but everything's got a theme these days. Um, the aesthetics police rule uh, in these environments. So we have to be cognizant of what's going out there and what it's going to look like and make sure, obviously, most importantly, that it performs uh, the way it needs to be. So some of the applications that we'll run through, that I'm going to run through, are, are underseat applications, uh, bowl area um, type applications um, uh, where the most of the clients are going to be seated during the, the, the games or concerts or what have you. Um, some ceiling applications around the concourse areas, you know, maybe some private seats, some, uh, you know, those types of things, uh, locker rooms, et cetera. Uh, we'll also discuss a few of the handrail applications that uh, I'm really excited about um, that are unique to the industry um, with some patent pending um, um, technology in there as well. Um, and then outdoor applications because everybody's focused on the experience inside the, the arena. Um, but a lot of that's moving outdoors now and, in, and outdoors in the areas where people are congregating for tailgates, et cetera. Um, maybe there's some uh, large concert areas where they may or may not have power or they need Wi-Fi and that type of thing. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what some of those solutions look like as well. So the first thing I want to talk about is some of the underseat enclosures. Uh, these are designed to um, uh, be an underseat, obviously, uh, wireless deployment, um, high density deployment. Um, a lot of these can be easily customized to fit underneath the seats. And I'll share with you a few p photos and um, um, pictures that we, we took of a recent project. Um, these are all customizable. This, um, this was actually a customized solution. Um, so when we put this together with the partner uh, involved in this particular stadium application, they came to us about you know, three to five weeks prior to um, needing something, and we were able to go from concept to actual product that they could actually install within four to five weeks. Um, um, and we were able to build something very custom for them with their assistance and their design and our designs as well. And then we were also able to etch their logo, as you can see on the picture on the right, um, um, uh, a little bit, and we can provide some sort of skinning mechanism as well. Um, normal underseat in this environment, normal underseat enclosures are usually laying the AP flat. Um, for this particular application, customer wanted to angle it and keep it at an angle um, to provide a little bit different um, uh, propagation um, underneath the seats. Um, they can be sprayed down and cleaned and obviously power washed as well. So um, the key, key component here was, you know, a quick turnaround time, three to five weeks of, of um, initial design to deployment. Now, this is some of the. This is rather interesting, and one of my favorites is, is the ceiling products. And I've got some re really good photos to show you of a of a recent stadium that we've uh, been involved with. 
Um, the picture on the bottom left um, obviously is a Cisco AP, but it can be, you know, obviously it's customizable for any AP, but it has a dual antenna option uh, to this particular application where they're using a high density um, um, patch antenna for the bowl area, and then they're using one for um, the, the concourse area, and I'll show you a picture of that. The, pictures on the, the picture on the right is the, the triangle or the cover for, um, for that particular box or that uh, particular setup. And then we've got in the top right another um, high-density antenna of ours uh, that we've used, and I'll show you some uh, deployment pictures of that as well. The covers themselves have been skinned, um, and we'll talk about more of the skinning, which has become really popular um, um, recently over the past several months. Um, to get done in some of these uh, unique uh, areas that we're, we're the customers are trying to get involved with. Um, so I'll show you, I'll share a little bit about some of the skinning in a little bit, but I want to show you this in, uh, in particular, this is triangle. Um, the picture on the left here is, is, um, is a traditional top-down approach, if you will, using high density that we um, did several years ago in, a, in an arena, uh, in a basketball arena in the south. Um, the picture on the right, if you look at the arrows, um, they're pointed at the triangle, which is ultimately, I'm going to skip back to the slide, the, it's basically that, that uh, same design on the bottom left with the two antennas in the AP and the triangle. We were able to skin that to match the color code of the actual um, new uh, facility that they're building now um, that's going to be going live here shortly. Um, and the purpose of that, the customer was looking for, the partner was actually looking for something where they could disguise everything. Um, the building architects wanted everything um, hidden. Um, and then, um, so they had some challenges with, you know, how we're going to do this with, uh, with the current setup and the, the design of the, the, the wireless. So we put everything in this, this enclosure solution um, using the dual AP mode and then having the, um, the antenna facing the concourse and then one down towards the bowl as well to provide. And then that's staggered around the arena accordingly based on the wireless design. The other new solution that we um, that we've recently come out with, which is patent pending, is a is a handrail enclosure, or excuse me, handrail antenna. Um, the uniqueness about this antenna is that it has dual radiating um, antennas on both sides of the the actual antenna, it's, or, or excuse me, the radome itself. So you're covering one aisle on one side and then one aisle on the other, um, and it's certainly um, uh, flexible enough. As you can tell in the picture on the bottom left, if you have a curved handrail, it comes with an adapter to accommodate that if you want to, or if you need to mount it to a, uh, a more flat surface like the one in the middle, um, you'll have an adapter um, to attach the antenna to that. And then you would have one for sort of a, a flat surface as opposed to a, a curved handrail um, on the far right. So it gives you multiple uh, mounting options all in, all in one package. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure that I um, emphasize that it's, it's two antennas in this um, particular antenna. Now, you, this actual physical size of the antenna is no larger than the screen size of um, an iPad mini. The width of the antenna is no more than the size than the actual width of the actual handrail itself. So maybe an inch, inch and a quarter um, in, in diameter, um, but it's very small, very compact with uh, basically eight antennas uh, inside. So the picture on the bottom left is gonna show the, um, where each one of the eight antenna leads are labeled. Uh, they're all dual band leads. So you'll have, you know, um, uh, the antenna facing on the left hand side will be labeled one, two, three, and four. Obviously, the antenna on the right will be labeled one, two, three, and four R. Um, so you, so there is no confusion when deploying the antenna with uh, with the different uh, antenna leads and the different um, uh, different radios as well. The picture on the right is um, uh, just a snapshot of the antenna deployed. Uh, they wanted it colored black, so they uh, they decided to, to paint it. Uh, we could skin it uh, if you wanted, and and and. We'll, we'll get into more of the actual skinning process and what that looks like uh, here in a slide or two. Um, but you would just run your uh, leads down through the center of the, um, the pipe uh, to where the AP would be and um, um, away you go. So I mentioned 
taking all the wireless and making ubiquitous coverage out towards the parking lots these, these days. I'm starting to see a lot more applications where um, they want they want to do that, uh, especially in, the, in football stadiums, as college football stadiums, where people are tailgating or spending some more time outside. And um, the stadiums, or excuse me, the building owners and, and property owners are starting to think more and more about that. Um, some of the things that we're, we're, we're working on and we have worked on and, and deployed in the past are uh, one is a, is a solar solution, which is on the bottom left hand side. So pop up Wi-Fi, if you will, if you're at a convention or um, like a music convention or something like that that might be out in a, a large uh, park somewhere where they may or may not have uh, power. Uh, you can certainly um, uh, deploy this for using solar. And we can help you size that and build that into um, to what it is that you what you need. If it's a multi-day, you know, we can help you with the batteries and, and the sizing of the, the the batteries and the um, charge controller, uh, as well as the solar panel. So you can make that basically a pop-up Wi-Fi solution, if you will. The other one are in-ground enclosures. Um, use that in uh, usually see that in amusement parks um, where they want everything themed. I mean, when you talk about amusement parks, everything these days is themed. Uh, they don't want to see much of anything, so we've developed some solutions with the help of some um, some partners and, and customers that we're working with to uh, develop this in-ground enclosure also. And the picture on the right is a picture of a bollard, and if you're not familiar with the bollard, it's, it's one of those things that you see sort of at loading docks or actually just about anywhere in front of buildings these days um, or, or any sort of venue. You'll see these just hanging around. Um, um, we designed something for a customer who wanted to put Wi-Fi outside, um, but it had to be aesthetically pleasing. It had to be completely covered and blend in with the actual surroundings itself. So we developed a bollard, and this, this bollard can be um, customizable as well. This particular one happened to be three and a half feet tall, or excuse me, four feet tall to meet some requirements um, of where the client devices were going to be. Uh, but we can uh, shrink that down, we can make it wider, we can make it uh, deeper, we can do just about anything you want with this. It's highly flexible uh, with how you want it to, uh, how you want to deploy. And I'll show you pictures of this deployed. This is actually in, um, in, um, in the actual facility now. So it's, uh, it's on a concrete slab um, and you can see how well it blends into the actual surroundings. Um, we can skin that bollard if you'd like. Um, that cover, we can get them in customized colors. Um, and it basically provides wireless outside and it doesn't affect the RF with the actual cover itself. So one of the things that we've been doing a ton of business with recently is skinning. What is skinning? Skinning is a way, is, is instead of having to paint an access point, which a lot of people tend to do, which may or may not, um, uh, violates uh, uh, AP manufacturers uh, warranty. Um, the skin is a vinyl cover that goes directly onto the product. And here's a, many examples, or just a couple examples actually of, of some of the things that we've done in the past um, that the, um, um, the stadium application on the bottom left-hand side, there was a, a section in the, um, in the stadium that had wood finish and they, the, the customer came back to us and say, Hey, can we get this? Instead of in black or, or clear, can we get it in a, in a wood tone? And they took a snapshot of the actual wood that it would be mounted on. And we were able to take that picture um, and uh, put, it on, put it over top of the actual cover itself so it blended into the actual uh, facade that it was being mounted on. And same with the picture just to the right of that that looks like bricks. Um, it's another uh, enclosure that houses an AP and, um, and uh, multiple antennas. Uh, but it was going on to a brick facade, another section of that same stadium. Um, that same stadium project, we had probably 10 to 15 different um, scenarios where we either had to skin something or build something custom for those applications um, that we were able to turn around in three to, three to four weeks uh, for them uh, from, from um, uh, just the design to the actual production and, and getting it in their hands so they can do the install. Um, the the picture right beside the um, the bricks is a is an AP that's been skinned with um, foliage. Um, this is one that's going on to into a resort um, that needed to be skinned to look like, and they want us to skin the poles, and they want us to skin the AP 
and the antennas to all look like the actual surroundings on the resort. So it just blends in naturally. So um, it's basically blind to the eye, if you were, it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than, um, you know, just sticking it up on a wall or putting it in some box. Um, this is one that we, um, we finished up a few days ago um, with some foliage. And then the picture to the right um, is a Cisco AP with, uh, with a rock um, uh, look to it. Um, and we've done some wood grains. And obviously Pantone colors are, are very easy. All we need is a Pantone color and we can get that done. So um, just a different way of, of being able to hide your eyes, um, your APs and your, your Wi-Fi in plain sight. The skinny is outdoor rated. It's the same type of vinyl that they would use on, on, um, on vehicles um, to protect the vehicles. Uh, that's another benefit of, of skinning versus painting is that it won't fade um, over time like paint will. And it can be removed. Um, so if you choose to use that AP in a different environment or move it somewhere else, it can be taken off. Or if you choose to, you know, uh, skin the uh, enclosure or what have you, that too can be removed and it doesn't violate warranty or anything like that. So it can be reused. Not the skin itself, but the AP in a different environment. That's all I had. Um, you know, I, uh, again, here's my contact information. I'm on the left, not on the right. You know, con contrary to popular belief, I'm not the guy in the silver suit with the baton twirling. Um, but I'm, my contact information is on the left. Uh, feel free to swing by our, our, our table at uh, Wi-Fi Trek here in a, a few weeks. Look forward to meeting everybody, and uh, uh, maybe I'll give you a big hug. As a token of us um, uh, spending some time together, um, we're giving away a free antenna uh, for attending today's uh, webinar. Uh, use the promo code CWNPWOW18. It's good until October 14th, the start of Wi-Fi Trek. Uh, you can either email us at sales at exceltext.com, call us, or, or email me directly, or you can uh, DM me on Twitter, and uh, we can get that squared away for you. So that's all I got, Tom. Well, thanks, Brian. And, thanks. and I got to say, I don't believe for a second that that's not you, because that's your RF shielding suit, right? <laughs> Precisely. Precisely. <laughs> I, I, I understand that you wear that on projects to make sure that you're not harmed by any of the RF. I, I, that's true, but I do not take the baton. <laughs> okay. Well, let's, uh, let's see what questions we might have. And uh, we're going to open it up to questions and answers at this point in time. And so if anyone has any questions, uh, make sure you type those in and we'll get those in for Brian while we're waiting to see what questions might come in. Um, I do have a couple of questions myself. Now, the, the skins that you're talking about, I'd, I'd like to get a little bit more information about those skins. What kind of material are they printed on? They're printed on a vinyl uh, material. It's the same exact material that you would see on, if you see a new car um, that's on a, a dealership that they put on the hood or on the doors to keep it from getting scratched. That okay, same type gotcha. of material. So it's very thin and has very little impact on the RF, right? Affirmative. That's correct. Yeah, because one of the questions we had was, does this skinning affect RF? Um, and I, I think that, you know, depending on, honestly, depending on the paint that you use, some paints could have materials in them that could actually be worse than those skins. Um, and then, like you said, painting can actually void the manufacturer's warranty. Whereas with the skin, even if they wanted to claim it did, you could always peel it off before you get your warranty support. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, that's the intention of I can't tell you how many countless phone calls I've received from somebody who's who's told the uh, the, the the installers not to that they could paint them, but they and not to use metallic based paint, but they have, um, and it's caused some issues. Uh, so yeah, that's that's kind of the reason why we one of the many reasons why we went down the skinning path. Yeah, absolutely. And can you give me a couple of like real world examples of some specific facilities where you've done some skinning that was kind of cool or interesting? Uh, I can't give specific names, uh, but I can give give you um, um, some general ideas about a, you know a couple of uh, um, stadium applications, like I spoke of earlier. Um, there's a large um, a retailer or e-tailer, if you will, where we did some skinning for APs on the outside of their buildings. Um, there's a, a couple resorts um, that we've done some skinning for as well, where they had to be a, a particular um, um, facade that blended in with their 
Um, there's a couple ski resorts as well that we've worked with that um, have required some wood to make it blend in with the actual um, the, 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 the lodge um, where people come and ski and then ski out of. So um, I can't give specific names, but I can definitely share at least those examples with you. Okay, cool. Well, um, that, we don't have any other questions coming in, so we'll go ahead and wrap things up. But I do want to say, based on your last little animated image there, that the presentation was legend, wait for it, dairy. And oh. <laughs> I know, very bad. Well right? played. Uh, <laughs> Uh, oh, wait, we have one question here before we end. Uh, the, the questioner says they're confused about your handrail antennas. Do you have to run a cable to the AP? Well, you always have to run a cable to the AP, but can you kind of explain maybe a little bit more about those? Yeah, so those antennas are designed to have eight leads coming out of the, um, the antenna. And I showed, uh, let me see if I can go back to the original slide. Oh, I go back too far. So here's where the leads would actually come uh, come out of. This is actually the mounting plate. Um, the leads actually come out of that, and they're 10 to 20 foot leads, depending on you know whatever it is, however far away the AP is going to be from the antenna, and the leads would just run through that straight to the uh, to the AP. Okay, so you've four got APs. you've got leads for up to four by four, it looks like, right? That's correct. Okay, cool. All right. Well, Brian, thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, this video for everyone here will be archived on YouTube on the CWNP TV YouTube channel. And again, make sure you stop by the Excel Techs booth when you come to Wi-Fi Trek and to get signed up so that you can go and visit with Brian and others there. Make sure you go to conferences.cwnp.com. Make sure you follow them on Twitter. And thank you very much for attending today. And Brian, once again, thank you for being with us. Thanks a lot, Tom. I appreciate it. Awesome. Take care, and everybody have a great weekend. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye.